Maybe I'll do a quick introduction because I know you're going to introduce yourself. Sorry. But I just want to introduce like sort of the point of why you're invited in the context and all those things. Um, so I'm not sure when or where about I met Jamie, but when I did, I fell in love with him right away uh, because he was very, we were very curious about the similar things. And he has a lot of experience. He can tell you more uh, working in places like Australia and New Zealand with Dr. Kate Regal Van West. Um, and he approached me with this idea of the potential for 3D printing with these functional juggling props. So I invited him here today to share with you guys a lot of the uh, exciting new things he's creating and uh, the potential we have with this new technology as well. All right, here you go, Jamie. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Moore. I'm currently at a festival in England, so there is a chance that we may be disrupted by absolutely anything. You know how festivals are, uh, but we have put up some signs and now I'm in a very big and very sweaty tent. So we're gonna get, uh, get through this as best we can. So thanks for the introduction there, Craig. That's amazing. Uh, a little bit of background about me. I specialize in teaching circus for SEN, physical disabilities, and really just trying to challenge what we can actually do within that sector. Uh, really trying to grow and empower the most people that we can and fundamentally it's making sure that every single person can take part in every single activity that they want to because why not and let's make sure that we can make this as free for everyone as we can because I mean education we shouldn't have to pay for this it, it, education should just be free everybody has a right to learn and to participate so that's what's brought me here today. And uh, as Craig mentioned, I have worked over in Australia, New Zealand, in England, and several other countries around the world. It was a joy to work with Kate. Uh, I was her research assistant on the Spinpoint clinical trials, which is coming up. Very proud moment for me. And you can see me much thinner with less hair in some of those videos. And uh, you can blame this on the pandemic. All right. So the first thing on our topics today is the juggling board. I'd like to say why I wanted to 3D print the juggling board first, because we were using wooden boards that we'd self-assembled and I'd experimented with some of the incredible products that Play have got out. Um, but they, I had a big barrier for those as a, as a facilitator. I, I always work off-site. I don't run a circus space. I go to people's spaces. And when I go to a class with 20 students, that means I need to take 10 juggle boards and some of these juggling wards are weighing seven kilograms each. And this is 70 kilos on top of all the other circus equipment you need to take to a class is a lot. It's just a lot to carry. I'm sure Craig can attest to this, seeing that he's traveled all around <laughs> the world, lugging bags and bags of juggling boards on his bags. It is a barrier. There are some benefits though to a much heavier board. Uh, especially when you're working with some challenging behavior. So that is where I will say that the 3D printing boards are not as good. You know, they could be e much easier thrown across, across a classroom, but they are likely to do a lot less damage if they are, but they're more likely to break with rough play. So <clears throat> I will demonstrate to you now how we put together a juggling board because I think that's the start of everything. Our juggling boards are made up of three pieces a base, an arm, and a little connector pin. To assemble, it's just as simple as push together. And if we take a little close look here, you can see the joint. So it's a male and female connection. The male part here takes all of the weight. We are using the flexibility of this particular material to allow it to flex and clip to be together. This is PETG, P-E-T-G, this is the material. So P-E-T is most commonly found in water bottles, which believe it or not, this is made from. This is made from 99.5% recycled plastic water powers on a 3D printer. The 3D printers themselves are run on solar power. So what we have here is ethical plastic. We are turning trash into educational tools. <laughs> Come on, isn't that fantastic? All right, so we simply clip the pieces together. And at this point, I'd like to say that you can make the lanes as long or as short as you want. 
Um, at a conference recently, we made probably the world record long functional juggling lane. It stretched all the way down from a balcony to the middle of a circus space where we rolled a ball down and somebody juggled it at the end. Great fun. Okay, so I'm going to make the standard length is what we sell them at. Um, but we often use them shorter because just like, well, just like people, you know, no table is the same length. So if you're doing this on a table, having it one length doesn't often work. You might need a shorter one, a longer one. And that becomes really useful as well when you're working with somebody that actually needs a bit longer processing time. So you can have more track space, really super useful. So we have two arms, two arms, the base and the other base just clips straight onto the top. And voila, we have here a lane. I just want to draw attention to these little cat ears and the sun. These provide a little bit of extra braking power and the gap in between in the middle of them allows us to comfortably roll. So they just add a little bit more stopping power. We do ones with the ears and without the ears. We recommend buying half of your board with ears so that you can have this at your end because if you're facilitating it, you're going to get the right amount of pressure on the balls, but often your facilitator, uh, your participants are going to get too excited and give a bit too much push. Um, it's also wonderful for when you're doing solo play on an angle of having the ears to stop. All right, so here you can see at the sides, we have these little extra shapes and we have a little male and female recess there. And Gina, if I can ask you to move the camera a little bit, we're going to set up a full board here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about can that. Can you still see that? Yeah. Looks like we can see us. Yeah. So we can line up five lanes here next to each other. Just simply aligning them with the little male and female parts. And then these clips, they just slide over the ends. And then once that's together, the pieces will hold true. So this means that you can use it as a complete board. It means you can use them as individual lanes. It means that you can make your boards have an infinite number of arms, legs, and sections, which is just really wonderful for creative play. Once you start to, um, separate the lanes. I'll just give you this example before we put it together. You can put lanes horizontally as well. So having lanes horizontally is, well, it's just a different angle that you can play with. Um, but that leads to a lot of extra advantages and disadvantages with the board. So here it is almost put together. Just a matter of moments. There you are. And here is the board all put together to all the pieces. That is the uh, traditional juggling board, 3D printed, and we're happy with it. Now I'm going to have to get one of these balls just to demonstrate. Wonderful. We've modeled the whole thing in three dimensional space around the 80 millimeter play board, uh, play ball. So it rolls super smoothly. It has a, just like the initial board, it comes slightly closer together just before the drop in to allow for a really satisfying thunk. And it's less likely to come out, which is a joy. And all of the pieces underneath the ears have recesses in so that they stack together on top of each other. Nice and neat. All right. So that's the uh, the juggling board. I'm not going to do any actual demonstrations with it other than talking you through it because you're going to have much of that to come forwards in the rest of the conference. What I do want to say now is that we've also developed a right angle section. So the ball can continue around a corner. Four of these right angle sections, chuck, chuck, put together, become a circle. Well, it's not exactly a circle. It's a square but the ball travels and it comes back to you and it's wonderful. So with this, you can actually stack four, five, six of these circles on top of each other, which will allow you to play by yourself in the vertical aspect. Now I haven't brought these with me today, sorry, 
<laughs> we were a bit rushed with what we had to prepare 3D printer wise because we had orders going out around the world. But take a look on our website, which is sticklings.com. We'll make sure that we include some of these links at the end of the presentation so that you can see and take a look online on our website. Now, for the rest of the um, conference, I'm going to show you a few other bits and then we're going to have a nice discussion about what the future of these props can look like. So I'm just going to get this into your head now while we move on to other props, is what do you think we could do to add to this? What do you think we could make or invent together to increase possibilities? Some suggestions that I've had so far might be a ramping section. Have a think, see in your head, is that going to be useful? Is that going to be great? Or maybe do we not need it? What about something that like clips onto your head and then interacts with the ball? Be creative, have a think, keep it in the back of your mind, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. The next thing I want to show you all is... Does anyone have any questions? We will do questions at the end, I think, regarding the juggling board. Gina, thank you for reminding me. So we are going to, I'm going to show you now the tiny tight wire. And the tiny tight wire, this is one of my favourite, most recent inventions. Um, yes, you can uh, gather questions in the chat. Thank you, Hungarian Juggling Association. It's Wonderful. All right. So our tiny tight wire, once again, made from plastic water bottles. Incredibly strong. I can jump up and down on this stuff. If you break yourself using it, don't sue me. Uh, I hold no liability, but it's so far so good. No problems. And I'll talk you a little bit through how this works. We have three different sizes of sections. We have the tiny tight wire, a uh, teeny tiny tight wire even. So this is several centimeters off the ground. This works very similarly to a tight wire. The wire, the rounded top section, is slightly larger than a regular tight wire wire. We aren't trying to replace tight wires. This is a trainer for them. We made this for several reasons, but ultimately with accessibility at the core. Firstly, a tight wire costs the best part of a grand. This costs 10, uh, 15 pounds. <laughs> Uh, all right, so it's a, it's a huge change in price. It's a huge change in weight. It's a huge change in how long it takes you to put them together. We give these to our participants to set up their own tight wire adventure track at the start of the sessions. This saves your time as a facilitator. It gives another creative activity for the children to be involved in, and it gives them a little bit more ownership of how they learn their activity for the session. So we have small sections. This one is actually a small curved section. And the curved sections, uh, I believe it's 12 pieces of a curve come together to create a complete circle, which I'm sure you can think of other uses for. For example, oh, your walking globe isn't going to roll off once you put it in the tight wire. <laughs> you know, small little things like this. Uh, but most importantly, it's about that creative aspect of learning to sort of move. So we go from the small and then we have these ramping sections here. So this means that it doesn't just start out of nowhere, it sits flush to the floor at the beginning and you can walk up and onto the tight wire. Um, and even, I haven't tried this yet, but because it's got the ramp sections, I think you could use these as unicycle tight wire trainers too. I don't see any reason why not, but these little ramping sections really help. The next size we have is the medium tight wire trainer. So I honestly believe that all you need to do is buy the cheap, small ones because they all work exactly the same way. But I never see kids over the age of seven want to go on the small ones and even adults. It's something in the mind. They want to go on the taller ones because it's more of a challenge. But obviously, if you're scared of heights, you're going to go for the small ones. If you're a small child going on the small ones, and maybe if you have mobility issues, just going on the small ones is enough of a challenge and an achievement for you. So it is as simple as just slotting these two parts together. Here's a curve in the other direction, and we just, just slot and uh, that's it. It's that simple that children can and do enjoy doing it. Do you know? Could you pass me this piece, but slightly different? Thank you. So uh, this is uh, rubber feet that we 3D print at the bottom to prevent it from slipping. We recommend that you use these on a flat floor, but we have been testing them out here this week in a field. And so far there's been no damage or breaking to them, which is really nice, but we are gonna say use them on flat ground. All right, so now we have a ramping section up to our 
middle section, again, it works exactly the same way. But now, as you see, we're starting to have a challenge and it's flush and it looks together. And the children, when they set this up, and it doesn't have to just be children, I'm just using children because they are who we most commonly work with. Um, they get to choose how you're going in 19 minutes and you want to go on the aerial hoop, don't you? I'm just doing an international conference at the moment. So would you um, go and chat with Gina for me? We have a circus space here and people are very keen to use our props. There is a first interruption, let's hope there's no more. We have a sign at the front. We're going to need a sign at the back as well. Thanks for understanding. All right. So, following our middle section, again, these coming curves, we have another ramp up to the taller section, which is here. So, you get a rough idea. Here's my hand span. So, we're roughly two feet tall. Actually, I might be able to measure it with this. Yeah, it's about 20 centimeters tall, this top section. Um, but here we go. You can start to see that it's big and you can just, you don't need to buy, uh, the way we do it is we sell these sections individually. So you don't need to have anything other than the small pieces, but you can make it any size, any length of whichever directions that you want. It is really, really pleasing. Uh, are you interested in seeing somebody try to walk on them? Is that advantageous? It's basically just like watching somebody on a tight wire, but if we've got people showing hands, I will pass this over to Gina and I will just move the camera. Give me a moment. You can put this extra one down as well. Good. All right, so um, in the video, you can see that I've put some different heights together without the actual sloping sections and it works absolutely fine and you don't need to buy the sloping sections. It just looks nice. It's just aesthetics or for the unicycle. So here we go. We're going to turn around and take a look over here at Gina. Now, here she is. Uh, so we're not on flat ground here. So there's a little bit of movement in them, but they work fine. This is the, the best Gina's ever done on this which is incredibly satisfying. We'll have a round of applause for Gina. <laughs> Superb. All right. There we are. So I love this product. I think it's brilliant. We've started using these in our sessions and you know how you always have a couple of kids who are relatively, like I'm going to say OCD, but they just like the, you know, the kids who stay behind to tidy up and often don't take part in every activity. All session long, they rearrange this. It's wonderful. And then they'll walk on it and then they'll rearrange it and then they'll walk on it. And this is something that we keep seeing. And we're all of a sudden seeing much more engagement from these particular people with just this one little toy. It's that building their own challenge. There's something in that that's special. And then they tidy it up, which is great. <laughs> all right, so. Oh yes, um, Gina told me to mention that, as you saw in the video, in the uh, pictures here, we have two different colours. Uh, they don't all have to be black, there's many different colours, but what we do is we like to highlight the colour change at the top, just so you're visually able to see where this is. If it's all one colour, it's totally possible, but it's going to be less beneficial for your vision. Uh, and we are using these with students with visual impairments as well, uh, because getting them on the tight wire is quite high up. So we just use the small sections with people with VI. It's wonderful because they are, and it works exactly the same way. It's just that confidence thing of being a higher. So yeah, big up for these. Uh, next one I'm going to talk about really quick is this little stick. This is uh, 3D printed from TPU. Now, unfortunately, this is not recycled materials yet, but we're working with the manufacturer to develop recycled uh, flexible filament. These are very difficult to destroy. These are solid workshop kits. The ends pull off because kids like to pull ends off, but then you just push the end back on. You can chew on these and then you can throw them in the washing machine and they will be fine. The stick itself is carbon fiber with a silicone adder. We started making these because one of the students in my class could only move his fingers. This was the only mobility he had in his body and he was in my class. So that, all right, we are going to make something so you can take part. 
and we made these and he and he picked it up and I showed him some pen spinning videos. So, this is the first physical activity I can do. And I just melted. <laughs> I was like, yes, what a big achievement. Um, and it is, you can do anything with these. Um, we usually start with just having people roll them down their arms and trying to get them. Oh, I nearly got away from me. Wow. Uh, we get people to do like spins and throws. Um, there's some really advanced tricks that you can start doing and really enjoying to get the spins off them and passing between your fingers. Now, one thing that I didn't expect these to be used for is we have a lady who teaches um, music and she buys these for her students because they teach you the finger articulation. So this was a real surprise for me to see this circus toy already now spreading into different avenues of work. And I just think it's something really important to keep in your mind that whilst everything we're doing here is under the guise of circus, we're actually we're creating things that is applicable for so many more uses than what we have. So it's important to get feedback from other people and see what they're using them for. And yeah, just remember the power of circus is big. All right, so that was the diddle stick. He's a really pleased, pleasing. And if you can have a look at Craig very briefly, you can see that he's got one of our other models. This one is made from silicone, held together with O-rings. Again, you can throw it in the washing machine. Um, these aren't as durable because they're silicone, but they feel amazing. Kids just want to rub them on their face or wear them as mustaches. That seems to always happen, but they're very sensory, really appealing. And what we've noticed with these is when we start a lesson uh, and use these early on, the kids don't want to give them back. We'll say, let's go on to juggling and they'll say, okay, and they put them under their arms and then they... They do juggling with it. No, no, we're done with this now. They're like, no, I'm keeping. <laughs> it just happens so much. So uh, they're a nice one to have in your space or in like a sensory box. Uh, but these are wonderful. And you can start using these for rolling. One thing that I watch the kids do, especially the younger kids, when we just leave a space open, particularly this is something we've done here at this festival, is they make the tiny tight wires into two tracks and they roll these down the tracks of the tight wire. And then, of course, you can start doing all of the different functional juggling patterns with them on the tight wire. So it's a multifunctional prop. And this is, I did not tell them to do this. These were just the kids going for it. And that's what they came up with through play using these tools. All right. The next one I'm going to talk about is really briefly. Uh, this is a rope dart. I bet people here haven't taught rope dart to children. And there's a good reason why. They need to be heavy. Nobody out there makes a soft, heavy, well playable rope dart. But this is super squishy. You can get hit in the head with this at full speed and it just be a little bump. So we've started teaching rope dart to kids. And this is, is beautiful because we've, I've just never seen it offered before. Because you imagine giving 10 children a heavy weight on the end of a string, because the strings usually, how long, Gina? Three to, four three to four meters long. So kids with a three to four meters string and a big heavy weight on the end doesn't go well in a big communal class. But now we can do that. And so it has the recyclable inner core and it's only swivel showing as hardware on the outside and it's just soft. So this is just a really brief one just to say that we can start using these soft flexible filaments and really add a lot of cushion to things. With that in mind, what we are currently doing for the roller bowler is designing little socks to go on the ends of the uh, wooden part. So you know how you have your roller bowler and it's the wooden part in question. Most kids who get injured are not the kids who fall, but the kids who are stood next to the roller bowler and the wooden bit shoots off and hits them in the side of their legs. This happens so many times, it's horrible to see. So we're making like little gloves to put over the edge which will also provide more grip when it's on the floor. But watch out for those because we're a little way away. We've got so many projects on, but that's in the pipeline. If anybody else wants to do it first, please do. I'm busy. Uh, <laughs> have my idea. <laughs> yeah. All right. So finally, I want to talk about this. Uh, oh, no, it's not finally. There's another big one to come out. Good point. Uh, yes, we can talk about that. Actually, throw that over. Up. Okay, uh, Diablo, 
really tough to teach, especially for people with visual impairments because of the axes. You need to be able to control the axes that it's on for you to learn. But you don't need to learn how to do all of this technical stuff with Diablo before you can experience it. With the Double Diablo. Ooh. <laughs> so the Double Diablo is a concept I have. Basically, it's two Diablos stuck together. Your Diablo strings, sticks even, sorry, your Diablo sticks have an extra string on. Now we've tried this out, we've prototyped it. We just stuck two Diablos together, put them on the strings, and you know what? Immediately you roll it, you pick it, it works, you throw it, you catch it, it works. However, the bearings are quite far sp spaced apart. So at the moment, what we're doing is we're going to replace the two inner cups that touch together with a smaller 3D printed cup, bringing the two axles incredibly close together, but still providing enough room for the distinguishment between the two. This will stop the need for the axes change. And we've been trying this out with people with visual impairments. It works. All of a sudden, people who can't see to change the axes of the way the Diablos are working, they don't need to anymore. They still get to experience the getting it going fast you know, and being able to do little throws and catches. It's great. And it is just that symbol. What we don't need to start super hard. We can start at a level that's accessible for everyone. I call it something like the double Diablo, which is obviously twice as hard. Get people interested and then move them down to the Diablo. So that's the Diablo for you all now, folks. Thank you, Assistant Gina. All right. So next, we're going to have a quick look at cigar boxes. Cigar boxes. How, who here teaches cigar boxes to kids? Anybody? Not really, I don't think. Because they're too big. Cigar boxes are one standardized size that is just too big for little child hands. So we thought, well, let's make them smaller. Oh, what, what are the, and what are the other problems with cigar boxes? They are made from wood. If you leave them outside, they will break. If you put a lot of weight on them, they will break. If they get wet, they warp. They have sharp corners. They hurt your feet when they drop. So we've made these uh, cigar boxes, basically. They are PETG core, same as the juggling boards and uh, whatnot. So they're recycled on the outside. And this on the outside is a soft, flexible material. So this doesn't hurt when it drops on your feet. This cigar box is 75% size of a, uh, I just saw a question come up there and I can answer that one really quickly now. Yes, we use bearings for the double Diablos. It's quite important to, I believe. All right. So um, this cigar box is, it's, this is the flexible stuff. It doesn't hurt. You can leave this at the bottom of a lake, pull it out a year later and it will still work. You can leave this in a desert under the sun. It will still work. The weather will not destroy these. These are soft, these are durable, and we can make them as big or as small as we want. So on the left here, this one is a 50% size cigar box. This is a 75% cigar box and use your imagination because this is a regular sized <laughs> cigar box over here. Uh, what we've done is we've included it a little bit of a dip here. So this bit of a dip really aids in catching. So it's no longer just a flat edge. It doesn't need to be. Now you have grooves for your fingers. So the catching aspect is really easy. I actually never got into cigar boxing. So you're going to have to excuse how badly this trick goes. <laughs> I did it. A round of applause for me. Whee! <laughs> up, up. Ow. <laughs> Just kidding, they're soft. <laughs> All right, so those are the cigar boxes. And then we thought with them, why are they just rectangles? Uh, we know why they were rectangles, but why are they just rectangles now? So in this same design and in the same scalable sizing, oh, worth mentioning, the size and the weight is scalable. So you can get a really small, really heavy, or you can get really large, really light, or you can find the perfect size for your shape and your weight with this, because we just change how much is inside the cigar box. We can have them very hollow or we can have them really dense. And it doesn't need to affect the strength. 
in the way that a 3D printer works, the strength comes from the perimeter lines rather than the infill. The infill, it's, it's, we can go into that in more detail, but I don't think we need to. So we've started making different shapes of cigar boxes. We have an arch, like a bridge. We have a triangle, we have a star, we have a circle, we have a semicircle. Uh, so, yeah, circle, sphere, circle. I get confused with two and 3D shapes, but that's all right. You can work out what I mean. We have all sorts of shapes and sizes. And honestly, we can just make a shape that's completely custom because the designs are so simple to produce. Um, and this just really works. We're really happy with these. These are toddler sized or portable sized cigar boxes. You can have these any shape, any shape. We love them. Really happy. We want to see more kids learning cigar boxes or more people with smaller hands, you can say. So there we are. And I think I am ready for a volunteer now. So if you could find someone, make sure they consent to being on camera. We're going to look for a volunteer now. And while she does that, I'm going to start explaining the infinity board to you all. So here we have the 3D printed infinity board. And the crowd goes mild. Or maybe you were all cheering, but I couldn't hear you. This is our aid to learn to juggle. So we have a few different points on this board. You can see just here, we have a circle. This represents, this is on both sides, just here. These circles represent where we would place a ball. And these arrows represent the direction in which we push the ball. It was very difficult to get this section here to work because, well, it's just difficult. <laughs> but we managed to do it in three-dimensional space and images. The balls will go all the way around and return. And finally, we have, um, if you like, you can stand up and we can, it might just, it might just be a little bit harder. Um, we have these catches here. So as we, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Amazing. Uh, remind me of your name? Rem. Rem. Rem has very kindly agreed to come and be a volunteer for us here. Uh, Rem, do you have any experience juggling whatsoever? About 30 years ago, somebody spent an afternoon trying. Somebody spent an afternoon trying 30 yeah, years ago with a, group, with a group of people. Did you manage to yeah, catch anything? No, 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 amazing. Thank you, Ram. Hopeless. Hopeless. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> yes. Uh, and just before we go over to Ram, we're going to take a quick look at the back because obviously this is a very large 3D print. So it needs to be broken up into sections. So you can see here all of the different sections and they are held together with nuts and bolts. So that means that you can take it apart but because there are a lot of sections, we advise that you just keep it put together and in a one of those art portfolios that artists carry around. Um, one of those big black cases, you know, the thin ones, big black case. You can put this and your juggling board and your juggling balls for the boards in said box. And when you're out in a field, you simply unzip your portfolio, put the two sides down and the grass does not get in between the lanes and interfere with it as you play with it. Ah, there is one tiny thing extra to mention to this. We have these two grooves at the top, one's here and one's here. These grooves, we sell the product when it comes with little ladders. The ladders improve the degree, degree of incline by one degrees for each number of, on the ladder. The reason we made these is we wanted a form of quantitative feedback that we could gather data from so that we can use this in like a rehabilitation setting. For example, three out of 10 of your pushes on level one are making it over the arch. And then you revisit that a week later and maybe you're like 10 out of 10 are getting over the arch, let's move up to two. You can start to track your transitions of strength and skill improvements using this device. So this was primarily divided uh, devised and used for as being a an accessible product for people who may not be able to throw or catch but actually it's become so much more than that to us this is so fast at teaching people to juggle of any ability level that we've actually started for all of our neurotypical and fully able participants we've been using this before our teaching so now we just have it 
it's like a two or three step juggling process and we're going to try and emulate that today are you ready nods yeah whoa <laughs> here we go all right so i'm going to turn this around this is on a little bit of a bad angle i'll see if i can that seems a little bit better. Okay, now you've mentioned that that's not a good position for me. Not really. Standing would be better. Standing would be better. It's difficult for you. It will be very difficult for the board temporarily for where we are right now, but, if, but we can be very close. Right. Right. Oh, that's perfect. We'll be here for a few minutes. Yeah. All right, so. Sorry, I think you said no. <laughs> <laughs> what you were getting into. Um, it was about 30. I did do it after. <laughs> You can edit it out. We can edit it out. I just get to where you said, but did you catch anything? And I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So if I can give you one of these yep. and one of these. Yeah. So you see these two little rivets here, the little recesses? Yes. You can put those in there for me, just here and oh, here. Right, there we are. So that is basically your catch position. You see these right. balls here yep. and the directions of the arrow? These yep. are our throw positions. So what I'll get you to do is put your hand on one of these balls. That's great. Pick it up, place it on the ball, and with your thumb here, roll the ball. Thumb here. Anywhere on the ball, with the thumb at the back, but put it in the tracks, that's roll it. With Almost. one hand on. Drop it just into the tracks. Okay. There you are, and roll with the thumb. So I would do it like this, and roll. You give that a try? Yeah. Brilliant. All right, so we didn't get very far around the track this time, so you can give it a bit more of a push. That was perfect. All right, let's do this one again. But before it reaches this side, I'm going to want you to pick this one up. So first, pick up, place, and roll. Well done. That's fabulous. And then place, and let's it into the tracks and roll. Good. Oh. Ah, so now we've got two on this side. Yeah. Here we go. So let's try this again. You pick up this one with the side with two on, place it and roll it. Very good. And again, place and roll. Wonderful. Quick, over this side. Oh, we've had a collision. Let's try this again. That's okay. No need to apologize. So we're always going to pick the ball up before it reaches the other side. Okay. So this one's coming over the top before it hits this one. Good. That's it. And roll it. And before it hits this side. Yes, you're doing it. Good. Okay. Can we see if we can keep this pattern going? Well done. Good. Good. Excellent. Almost. Let's try this hand down and roll. Good. There he is. And again. Almost. Let's pretend that worked. There we go. And yes, to here. That's right. Good. Very nice. Good. Straight down and roll. Good. Straight down and roll. Good. Again. Good. That's it. Good. Try and make sure that the balls yeah. never stop moving. Right. We go again. Um, here, here. That's right. Well done. Good. That's it. You did great. Okay. Here. Yeah. Don't push. Good. This one. This one. Yeah. Good. That's great. So we're going to go a tiny bit slower. Yeah. Okay. Because we're reaching your critical processing frequency here. So we're just going to slow down a little bit. Start with whichever side has two balls on. You can choose. That'll be the left side then. So, so that one's there. Or that that's one's right. There. This one's here in your catch yeah. position. Okay, and if you could use that, perfect. Good. Great. Oh, here we go. Let's try again. Sorry. That's all right. Take this one. Put it down here and roll. Good. And now take a breath. This one. So at the moment when you pick it up. Put it straight back down. Okay. Yes, no yeah, roll. I'm holding it. Right, okay. There you go. Good. Good. Again. Straight down and roll. Very good. Straight down and roll. And roll. Good. Almost. And again on this side. Straight down and roll. Very good. Perfect. That's all right. You've been amazing. Thank you. Is that it? That'll be it for now. Can I get a high five? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for today. Rubbish. Okay. I don't think it was rubbish it's at all. So absolutely rubbish. I think you absolutely smashed that. We got those balls going round. I saw the pattern. Yeah. I saw the timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw the recognition. It's wonderful. <laughs>
yeah. in my eyes, yeah. you are a juggler right now. Yeah, right. Okay. I can, <sighs> see, I can see why it would well work for the rest of it, for the future. Of it, exactly. Know. So with a bit more time uh, and a little bit more sort of uh, time together yeah, yeah. doing this, okay. I believe that we could get you juggling within a matter of moments. Brilliant. So, Brilliant. But I am going to have to say goodbye to you okay. for now and return it's to the okay. conference. Say thanks to Rem, everyone. Thank you. Thank Everyone. you. <laughs> there we are. Thanks for joining us. Sorry. You're right getting up. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. You're a star. Okay. So at the moment, while we're doing this in the tent, we're actually facing on a bit of a slant. So it wasn't working quite as. Uh, quite as intended but that's where the ladders that's where the ladders can come in and be really really useful all right so what we typically do as we carry on through the steps of learning to juggle is that we'd move up the ladders once we start to get quite high up the ladders we will be asking participants to change from the thumb on the back to hands underneath to properly properly emulate the throw and we only spend a very short amount of time here we then bring participants to watching me. I will demonstrate the pattern and then they will do it again on the board just one or two times until they cognitively turn around and go, yes, no, I get it now. I'm doing that. I see it. And then we simply do just the throws without catches, then the throws without catches, but catch the third ball, throws without catches, catch the last two. And then if we see the non-dominant hand reverting to doing the easier task of passing the ball. We explain that they just need a bit more time and they get that by throwing a bit higher and keeping their hands below their chest. So it's that's our stages to juggle. Now with um, fully able neurotypical participants, we have reduced our time from uh, averages around 20 minutes to teach someone to juggle without this. And we've taken it down to five to seven minutes for when we've been using this, it's been insane. We <laughs> we have really just been shocked by how quickly people have picked it up. And especially for this part, the non-dominant hand passing rather than reaching the same height, we just get, every time they do it, we go back to it and they have that aha moment of, it doesn't do that in this pattern when we go back to this, which is really quite joyous and a lot of fun. So, um, I think we are probably at the point now where we should open up for questions because I want to use your brains as well for everybody else that's here. I want to know what you think needs improving in our world of education. Have you got ideas for inventions? Have you got thoughts for what could just be a little bit better? So first we'll do questions about what I've presented, ruminate on the ideas for inventions, and let's have a chat. Could somebody help to facilitate with any questions that came up in the actual chat log? And can also somebody kick us off with a question so I'm not sat here like this. <clears throat> yes, of course, we are here. Uh, thank you very much for... Uh, <clears throat> Jerry, you asked the question during the first part when, uh, uh, when it was about um, 3D printed uh, juggle board and how about a small U shape so that if you use it in solo or in clan, you can get balls to go from one lane to the next. E.g. do similar things as four ball, fountain, and so on. So, yes, uh, thank, thank you. Yeah. Yes, that's right. We, uh, I, I perhaps didn't explain myself properly, but we have made this already. It's the combination of two corners. So I mentioned we've made the corner shape, but if you simply put two corner shapes together, it will be a U shape. Does that answer your question clearly? Um, how, how wide is that? How, how wide is your U shape then? So the, um, the U shape can be as wide as you want it to be if you put more arms in. But the U shape... I'm, I'm wondering, can it be narrow? Can it be as narrow as between two uh, adjacent strips? Yes. You can? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's um, the way it would work with, um, two, the, with the U shape and the two adjacent strips. Give me just a moment. It would be a case of 
the 90 degree angle would come to from here to about here. So there would be a gap about this much between the two strips. But you could still fill the space further down with another strip if the U-shape came around the back. But you could also put one 90 degree angle and then arms, arms and then another. So your U-shape could go all the way around your board if you wanted to. Jamie, I yeah. have some photos if you want me to screen share the ones that were posted on Facebook from when you were in Italy. I have those photos if you want me to share. I think it would be a great time. Thank you, Craig. Yeah. Yeah, because it's such a, it's the concept, it changes everything. <laughs> so you see here, you see the arrow, the guy who has his face in the center. That is the night, that's four 90 degree turns. So you could connect and you could take half of that and connect it to two different juggle board lanes. And then the other, you could put lanes in between this, just make it longer, more of a rectangle, um, you know, whichever shape you want. And then you, you can see the proportions there. Um, this was from Jamie's visit to um, Altro Circo in Italy. Uh, and the, the ladder, see, you see the stairs that he talked about here, the green stairs and the blue and gray there. So the idea is that you can add the incline and know exactly which level you're playing on each time. You can quantify the results more accurately. Um, uh, whilst, whilst those pictures are up there, if you could go back one again, Craig, to the one we were just on. Uh, you can see those are the full-size cigar boxes. And you can see the prototype of the double Diablo. Uh, yeah, here, here. Oh, yeah. can you just do something? Here we go. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> Look at that, that's really helpful, thanks. So the 90 degrees too, you can do this, that zigzag, the Z. Uh, yeah, and, and if, then this is you... like a cat toy here at the bottom. Um, <laughs> I love this idea, I wanna play with it so much. Yeah, so we were able to see in that image at the bottom corner, there was the stack of circles. They're held together by M8 rods and bolts which means that the longer the bolts, uh, the longer the uh, rods you buy, the more sections you can put in, the closer and the further away you can host your sections. Um, really excited. We haven't got around to actually making that yet, but everything works theoretically just as it should. Um, when you design things this way, they work. <laughs> so we will get around to making one of those at some point, but 3D printing takes a long time. Uh, we do this in our kitchen. We can't really outsource what we make because uh, we are giving you an incredibly good price. Uh, we had quotes from other companies uh, because we looked into outsourcing and their quotes just to sell to me were more expensive than the prices that we are selling these products at to you. So unfortunately it means that this has now become partly my job, <laughs> but at least we can make sure that we keep up to a quality standard we're happy with. Do we have any other questions on any of the functional juggling parts or the props that I've shown you at the moment? What's the delivery time at the, for, for things at the moment? Because you say you, you have to do it all in your kitchen. I mean, I'm very keen on ordering stuff. I'm very excited about everything you shared. I think it's brilliant. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, honestly, it depends on how much you order. So uh, let me think, to produce a juggle board at the moment, we can usually produce a juggle board in around two days to get it sent out. But obviously then if you order 10 juggle boards, it's gonna take at least 20 days. So it, all, it just depends on where it falls with how busy we are with current orders. And it takes me to be at home to manage the machines. We prioritize teaching children and other people. So, the printers are good. I press a button and they work until they need some attention at like every 10 hours, but they need someone to change and take off and put on the new one, put more material in. So in general, it's relatively quick, just a couple of days here and there, but sometimes we might be on a week long project and then nothing can happen for a week. So yeah, we're a small business uh, and all the profits from this, actually go towards uh, running our business so people can keep having free circus. I don't see any money from this. Nobody sees the money, but it keeps our organization going and none of our participants pay for our sessions, which is 
you know, what we're all about. Yeah. So thank you for your interest on those. Oh, and it'd be really yeah. cool to see what you do with them as well. Um, um, Jamie, I don't know if it's a topic you want to talk about now, but for me, it's interesting or curious, um, the potential to um, have people produce locally. Yeah, we can talk how, about how it now. That works, how that works for you, you know? So the, ultimately what will, what will happen, uh, because we don't really like shipping internationally. We've made a sustainable product. We don't have sustainable international shipping at the moment. It kind of, it's a pain. We don't really want to ship internationally, but we have no quality control if we send it to another country. And 3D printing is, you're either very good at 3D printing and you charge a lot for it, or you are not very good at 3D printing and you might, ruin our brand <laughs> so it's a very it's a tough one um i'm very much open to exploring a relationship with anybody who is passionate about producing these outside of england or in different parts of the world uh it would be a long back and forth there would be a small investment into testing out the local production their quality and their capacity um but what we are, what we would like to do is to just um, ask for the way we do it. It's just asking for ten percent of sales price. But this works out better for everyone because ten percent of sale price is a lot cheaper to have something chipped nationally than it is internationally. So the buyer would save money. Uh, the person producing it would make most of the profit. But we just get a small amount for keeping our business going. And so it's actually. It works out in everybody's favor at this amount. Um, it's worth saying as well that when we made this product, we released the files for free on mine. Um, we have done this with the juggle board. We intend on doing this with the infinity board because we think that this is such a good product that people need it. But the infinity board in itself was a very sizable investment in designing time prototyping that currently we're nowhere near to recouping a baseline on that um once we reach that i don't see any problem in sharing the files for it online i think it's great but we do want to at least break even before we give it away just being being uh down here in australia i'd be very keen to talk about uh some sort of local production uh yeah an option because yeah like getting things shipped to australia is just yeah, always horrendous and expensive so um, yeah, yeah, I, I will definitely be in touch. So, um, and I think I've actually been in touch with you about getting yeah, some stuff in beforehand, but yeah, keen to talk to you soon. Well, we would absolutely love it if somebody down there in Australia had the energy to get this going together, we would be over the moon. So, yes, please, Mark. Yeah, and 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 and, and I'm already like in, in talks with Craig about like you know, doing just doing, doing some workshop teaching and spreading that sort of stuff as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, super, super, super keen. Um, yeah, but like, yeah. But, but also not in a rush. Like, I, I want to do it, but yeah. I want to do it, do it well and take time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. We can have a, we can have a proper chat. Uh, the first thing to do would be just to see if you can find any sustainable 3D printing people in there and take one of the files from our website and send that over to them and ask for a quote. It would be, that would be your simple starting steps um, because then you can gauge whether or not it will be cheaper to actually buy a board from us and get it shipped or not. So you want to look for a sustainable 3D printing service. The material is PETG and just get the files from our website and get a quote on one piece. Thank we'll you, Mark. Thank you, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, any final questions on whether or not this was, well, on any of the products? If not, let's talk about the future and what we can work on together to make. So I just I just want to say I am I love what you're doing I love the general direction you're going, it's just like the fact that it's just like trying to like get every single person that comes into your space to learn and experience that just makes me so happy and wonderful and I love I love the fact that some products were specifically made for a specific person like yeah, like your little yeah diddly diddle sticks oh my god it's just like that just warms my heart and just is wonderful and wonderful and 
yeah and, and then I, I guess like the thing that, you know, because you're so doing it to solve a very particular problem yeah you know it's going to work for that particular person and then it works for others and that's great yeah and there's all these other things so um yeah so i'm just really excited and I, I love that you're just taking that and yeah applying it to different aspects of circus as well and it's going even going beyond juggling and going to tight wire and yeah and skull boxes and other things and so it's great so i just want to just generally comment that i love your work so. <laughs> <laughs> thanks Mark. big ups yeah <laughs> that's great um Okay, well, let's let's work together now. Let's think. Can somebody give me a an aspect of teaching that they are struggling with, or people aren't being able to access at the moment? Something that we could potentially reinvent. A good place to start is think about what props you normally teach, because each of us will use different props to teach, and then think: Are there limitations to this? Is there a group of people I don't use this with? And then we'll talk about what is the base experience required for somebody to actually experience an achievement within that prop, to gain an interest, to work further, and to developing a passion and a progress. So I guess one, one thought that comes for me is um, hula hoops. Very often we do a very basic and I'm, I'm really interested to hear about like the hula hoop things that was going to happen in this in this um, in this conference. But the hula hoop around the body is a quite a tough skill. Yeah. So like like often yeah, you know, hula hoops lend themselves to other ways we can you know, still like interact with them and, and do things. And as a in a general as a general rule, that's what I want to kind of like. Uh, I'll, it's actually one of my go to props. I will almost always teach hoops before I teach toss juggling, but at least before I just introduced to this sort of space, this this sort of world. That was always what I'd go to because there's always these easier yeah, things to pick up. But I'm really intrigued about getting that that that, that actual like around the body experience, which is such a iconic connected yeah, thing to to hula hooping for as many people as we can. Like yeah, that's but that's my first thought. So it is, yeah. Um, I'm sure that you already uh, appreciate this thing, but of course you can use different parts of your body. But I know it's not the same. So we have thought this through. And um, the best that we have at the moment is uh, fire hula hoops that already have the screw-ins for the fire wicks. Uh, you can screw in legs with a little wheel at the bottom. So the legs come out at an angle, dolly wheel at the bottom, you stand in the hoop and you move the hoop around yourself and it's rolling on the floor. It requires a flat floor to do it but it means that you don't require any sort of aerial suspension to do it. You don't get the exact feeling. It is not as exact. It is slightly different. You are doing something slightly different, but you can at least start to get the use from it. That's it's fascinating. Bulky. That's it's fascinating. Big, it's bulky. It's not perfect, but it is a start. So keep that in your mind and think about how we could develop that further. Um, the only other suggestion that we have that has not gone as far is shoulder straps. But again, not perfect, but close, but perhaps there is a, a nice halfway between the two. A really, really great question for that, Mark, and we'll keep thinking about that a bit more. Anybody else? I've, I've had some people ask, um... Um, what about balls that make a sound to make it even easier for uh, visually impaired people? And yeah. obviously you could think of balls uh, that have a sound, but maybe you can also do something with the board, with a little profile or something, because already you can feel very slightly that a ball is rolling um, on, on a sort of a very slight vibration on the board. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just thinking aloud. It's... I'm not sure. No, no, it's, this is something that we've given a lot of thought to. Firstly, um, you need a, a ball that makes a constant noise. If you put a ball in with a bell, the bell is only going to ring when you catch it or when you throw it and it reaches the peak kind of thing, you know? It's not going to ring constantly. Second, you need to have, um, you need to have three different noises, ideally. So if you were trying to learn to cascade, you would need constant drones at different frequencies. But there's no doubt that it would help. Now, um, I just want to say I've had more success teaching people to throw a hat onto their head than I have to just do 
up and down ball juggling. It's surprised me as well. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But you get there's a lot more noise from the wind and you are throwing it at your body. But it does require one to one feedback and um, visually describing the best way that I've come because we have done some good success with balls after using the infinity board. And I am going to wrap up now. Thank you. Uh, but the best thing that I find is really emphasizing the 90 degree angle of which you release the ball. So, you know, if you let go below 90 degrees, the ball goes away from you. If you let go after 90 degrees, the ball comes towards you. But training that 90 degree a lot for people who, have, who are completely um, blind, just training that over and over again, but with eyes, with a support staff, telling them if it was too early, too late. This is how we've managed to do the best with this. And uh, we've got our group that we're working with at the moment, relatively reliably doing the one, two, with them crossing the middle and catching, relatively reliable, which is tremendous. This has only been through two terms of work. We are about to finish this particular project and the students want to do a fire show. So we are teaching blind people to perform with fire and we have our show coming up next month. And fire? For blind people, people say, what? It's more for the sensory feedback. You can hear mm. the fire, you can smell the fire, yes. you can get the heat. They are more spatially aware of this thing that is far more dangerous because of what it does. Um, just something to consider. So this might be the first fully blind fire show ever produced. Uh, we're not <laughs> sure, we love it. but we're very, very happy. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. I think we do need to wrap up now. I'm being told. Jamie, Jamie real quick. Uh, Jael shared this with me. It's a solution to the hula hoop they already came up with. You understand Very it? Very nice. I do. Okay. Just yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jael. Okay, folks. Uh, this has been a, a delight and a pleasure. I look forward to catching up with the rest of the conference after I've enjoyed my holiday. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Jamie. Okay. Thank you very much. And you, you recorded everything. Just yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we recorded everything. And is everybody up to uh, be edited in the recording? Yes. Yes. So yes. <laughs> they have no problem if we put it on live, YouTube, whatever. OK, thank you very all much. Good. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, yeah. Cheers. Thank you, everybody. See you guys at the rest of the conference. All the best.